Hi there, welcome back to the tabletop. So the open beta for Darrington Press by Critical Role's Daggerheart is still underway, recently getting the final major update uh, before the game has a full release in 2025. And there have been quite a few changes to the game since it started. Now, I recently got a chance to finally run this game while it's still in its open beta uh, phase for a group of players. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it because I don't think this game is going to be a D&D killer by any means, but I do think that it brings a lot to the table that a lot of game masters and a lot of players that enjoy fantasy, specifically high fantasy, are really going to be able to get a lot out of this game. So here are some early impressions, the good, the bad, and kind of what I'm looking for in this game as it is released later next year. So let's go ahead and start with the basics. What exactly is Daggerheart? So if you haven't heard yet, Daggerheart is a fantasy tabletop role-playing game, kind of akin to something like Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder, though it does have some of its own little unique twists to it. Rather than using a single 20-sided die like more popular systems, this uses two 12-sided dice that are called your duality dice. Uh, each die has a representation of hope and fear. These dice are used for the vast majority of things that you're going to be doing in the game as a player. Game Masters, on the other hand, will be using a single 20-sided die, specifically when combat breaks out, so it's not going to be used near as much. So if you're a player and you are making any kind of skill check or you're going to, if there is anything that's going to be left up to chance, you're going to be rolling those duality die. Anytime that you make a check, whichever one rolls higher, you will be making your hope with fear or with hope depending on which of those dice is higher, has a bigger number, and then that is going to move the plot forward. Rolling with hope usually gives you better overall outcomes, even if you fail the check. You roll with fear, you're not gonna get as good of outcomes even if you roll really high, so that's something to keep in mind. The game really tries to focus on a lot of collaboration between game master and players as well. Uh, so you're coming up with a narrative together, you're able to shape the world and immediate actions. This is something that I truly do like about the game first and foremost, that you don't really see as much in other games, in my opinion, at least in terms of running it as a game master. The game has a lot of freeform uh, roleplay rules. Uh, a lot of things are a little more vague. Uh, they aren't going to be quite as structured as you would see in something like Pathfinder. And while the tiers of success that are presented in the rulebook, I don't think are quite as, you know, exact as they would be in Pathfinder, it's not just going to be necessarily a binary pass or fail either. So that's something to keep in mind when you are making your uh, checks while playing the game. Now, while the game has freeform Role play. it tries to do a little bit more in terms of crunchy combat. There's a lot of things that you are having to balance as a player, you know, depending on which class you are playing. Each one has its own kind of character sheet uh, akin to a playbook from a Powered by the Apocalypse game, such as Monster of the Week or Thirsted Sword Lesbians. Uh, each one plays a little bit differently from the others, and when combat is going, uh, it is, again, more freeform. There are no initiative rules or anything like that. The party is usually determining uh, who is going and how many actions are being done. And then it shifts back over to the Game Master side of things when a roll with fear occurs. This game has a lot of influences that are going into it, and it very proudly wears those on its sleeve. I would say that if you have experience with another fantasy role-playing game, you'd probably be able to get into Daggerheart very quickly, very easily. Making characters, all things considered, is breeze. It doesn't take more than five to 10 minutes. You're really just making a couple of choices in terms of kind of who you want your character to be, and then you're really able to get right into the thick of things. So let's talk about some of the pros or the good that I see with this system. So when you're looking at this from a player perspective, there are a lot of choices and a lot of little ways that you can kind of fine tune and tweak your character uh, to kind of be who you want them to be. Starting out, you have a grand total of nine classes, 18 different ancestries, and nine communities that you choose to make up your character and who they are. Additionally, I really like the fact that uh, team building and bonding is already encouraged just with the character sheets alone. Each one provides you with some good questions to be asking your character and to be asking your party. So we already have some bonds setting out. I, I love this. This is something that I like that other games that, you know, Dungeons and Dragons doesn't do necessarily well. Um, but I like this a lot. It really encourages people to be talking when you are making characters together. As I mentioned earlier, there is a huge, 
emphasis on collaboration, both between the game master and the players. Even in the quick start adventure that I ran, there were multiple times where a description would be uh, read out loud to the players, and then they would be encouraged to come up with additional details themselves to kind of weave that into the narrative. That way you are asking players to contribute to the story and the world as much as the game master is, and that is something that I really love to see in different tabletop systems. I also think that this game does a lot in terms of a narrative structure. I think that this is going to really reward good role play and the fact that hope and fear give you different kinds of results as a whole means that you kind of have to think on your feet a little bit, but I, I do enjoy the way that it plays. While it doesn't sound like a whole lot on paper, when you're actually playing the game, it does make a lot more sense. Now, while the combat is a little bit more freeform, as I said, there is no kind of initiative system or anything like that. Players are encouraged to just kind of start taking actions, and it is going to be up to the players and the game master to make sure that everybody's getting their own fair shot at it. It's entirely possible to avoid combat if you don't want to be involved in it, and the more actions that are building up means that there's going to be more that the game master is able to do when that inevitable roll with fear occurs. And personally, I really like the choices that game masters get when it is their turn. This isn't going to be a back and forth slugfest necessarily, but if there's a lot of actions that get taken, if the players are getting very lucky, there's a lot you're going to be able to do with that as well. And there are multiple ways to be using fear, both in terms of a narrative and a combat structure that you can be looking out for. Also, it, I will say with the group that I played, once we finally got a handle on the way that combat works, it felt really good. And I really like the way that there are multiple things for players to track. You know, if a player takes a, you know, a moderate hit, are they going to be sacrificing some of their armor to be able to absorb some of that blow? but you don't know when you're gonna be able to rest and repair that armor. So is it, it becomes kind of that gamble of do I do it now or do I do it later? And when things do finally get going, it is actually a pretty fast combat system, all things considered. It does seem a little awkward on paper, but I'm telling you, once you, once you give it a couple of rounds, you'll get the hang of it, no problem. Now, if you are coming at this from something that's a little bit more structured, such as Dungeons and & Dragons or Pathfinder, even something like Lancer, uh, for example, it's going to take you a little bit to get used to, but I will say that a lot of this game is focusing on what I personally really enjoy in tabletop role-playing games. Uh, it does have that kind of very narrative uh, focus. Combat can also be very fast and fun, but I will say it's not going to be for everybody's taste. So keep this in mind, and I would really encourage you to look over the open beta, just to glance over the rulebook while it's still free, if this is something that you're interested in. So there's a lot that I like about Daggerheart already, but there's no such thing as a perfect system, and there are things that I still think don't really work the best all things considered. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those cons as well. So far over the span of the open beta, changes have been happening often uh, and I'm actually very glad that the last one was just announced just because it means that now we have a more finalized version of what the game's going to be. It has been a bit of a pain to be able to, to try to keep up with the rapid changes that have been going on, especially when it's redoing entire mechanics such as advantage. Uh, going from initially being a six-sided die that gets added or subtracted from a roll up to a 12-sided die, basically giving you another duality die to track, then back. It can be infuriating to have to reread a rule book multiple times, and I'm just glad that it seems like as though things have slowed down a little bit, and we're not gonna have to worry about that as much. Also, I will say that while I enjoy the freeform uh, narrative and combat uh, mechanics that are associated with this, it's going to take a lot of patience and a lot of work within a table to make sure that somebody isn't dominating uh, combat, for example, just because there's nothing saying that one person can't make eight moves in a row. Um, I know that other people have voiced this kind of concern as well, but if you work with your players and you work with your table, so that way nobody is really being left out, others are getting included, this should be something that you can overcome. It's going to take you a little bit to get there though, just keep that in mind. Also, I will say I'm personally still a little underwhelmed when it comes to the hope features that are available. I understand that starting out, there's not a whole lot that you're able to do just because it's act it's more or less used to activate special features for your character, such as we'll use the Seraph class, for example, being able to take flight if that is a, an option that you chose. Um, and when it comes to things outside of combat, you're pretty limited. It is basically, do we want to help an ally? Do we want to set up team attacks and activate special features? Unfortunately, there's not really a whole lot else to it. I understand that there's gonna be more that's coming in terms of what classes can do when it comes to hope. But considering it is a limited resource, I really wish that there would be something more that you could do with it, even something to the extent of a momentum mechanic like what you see in 2D20 games. Just because I have seen other systems that implement these kind of meta currencies really well, 
I just think that there could be a little more done before the game releases. One last thing, and this is a little bit of a nitpick, I remember when the game was announced that it's showing that they're going to have all kinds of cards and physical handouts that are going to be great for people that are playing in person. However, I do think that this is a bit of a mixed bag for me personally. It makes the game feel a little bit more like a board game and while playing online, which is primarily what I do these days, it won't be as much of an issue, especially when the digital character sheets are very well done and you don't have to worry about them as much. I still think that they feel a little gimmicky, all things considered, and I think that it's just gonna be something that you're going to have to you know, bundle up and bring to the game night if this is something that you're gonna be playing with your table. So in conclusion, as a whole, I really like the way that Daggerheart is shaping up. I think that this is going to be a game that fits my personal preferences very well. I can see myself running this game uh, even for sh shorter form campaigns, maybe playing something for a bit longer while there are only 10 levels for characters. This isn't going to be something that, you know, I feel is going to be played for years and years and years on end for single campaigns unless you're, you know, rotating through characters or you have very slow level up progression. Um, I do think that there is still a little bit more that needs to be done with it as a whole. I'll need to look through the overall changes that have been made with this last major update before the game releases in 2025, but as a whole, I think that this is one that is going to be good. Is it going to be a D&D killer? Absolutely not, just because D&D is such a cultural, iconic tabletop role-playing game. It is synonymous with tabletop role-playing games, whether we really want that or not, and the game's been around for 50 years. I do think that this is a game that is going to fit at specific tables, and this will be preferred by some tables compared to something like D&D, especially when you want a little bit more of a narrative focus, and you want to be able to have more bonded kind of characters. But as a whole, I do think this is a game that is worth checking out, especially if you like fantasy role-playing games. Is it gonna be for everybody? Absolutely not. There's no such thing as a perfect role-playing game, but as a whole, I'm really liking it, and I'm looking forward to more. So that is going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Have you played Daggerheart? Uh, if so, what did you think about it? If not, why not? Is there anything that's holding this game back for you? Sound off in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see a little bit more about what I do here on the channel, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.